Joining me today is Joginder Singh, President and Managing Director of Ford India. Joginder, good to have you on the show. Thank you, Harmas. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice early morning, no traffic, perfect conditions for yeah. going for a drive. Let's go for a drive and hear what yeah. you have to say Absolutely. about uh, what Let's... your company is up to. Joginder Singh, who took over as President and Managing Director of Ford India on December 1, 2012, has been with the company since 1980. A globetrotter, he has clocked over a decade, each with Ford in Europe and the US, among others, and finally joined Ford India in 2008. Today, he faces the task of taking the company through the slowdown in the Indian economy. In fact, even CM does not see things picking up soon. How deep does he think the problem runs? Well, I think, Hormuz, my view is that there's a, a lot of issues in the economy right now. So uh, the government, the central bank, they have a lot of trade-offs to make. And I'm sure there's very good minds and very smart minds working on uh, trying to solve this issue. They're just being politically correct, well, I think. What, I, <laughs> what I, I felt good about was that uh, the Minister of Heavy Industry, who also oversees the auto industry, has a really good recognition of the issues that the industry faces. He knows what affects demand. He also knows what it takes to stimulate demand. So, you know, at least that communication that we've done with the minister has been very effective. And what do you think really uh, are the core issues that need to be tackled, let's say, immediately? Obviously, there's certain yeah. things beyond uh, everyone's control, like uh, the rupee depreci depreciation, which has really impacted everyone. Right. Fuel prices, are just the cost of, uh, you know, car ownership Indeed. is just shooting up. Uh, but what what really do you think can be done or what would you like uh, you know yeah. to be seen well you know the way i think about this is that there are several near term things that have to be done with a sense of urgency and then you know there are some measures that have to be taken in the medium to long term more of a policy uh, nature so in the near term you know one of the things that is very clear is that the excise structure that we have in the auto industry is one of the highest in the uh, yeah. amongst the different industries in this country and so that's very problematic because I think one thing the government can do in the near term is uh, uh, reduce the excise duty so we can stimulate demand as a short term measure. So that's that's one action. The other one is clearly, as you mentioned, you know, we have high inflation, high interest rates and a declining rupee. Now, that really is not a very good balance to have. And uh, uh, so somehow, I think with all those great minds that are at work, there's probably a different balance of these uh, economic factors which in turn, in our view, if you're able to arrest inflation, if you're able to arrest the decline of the rupee, in turn that allows the central bank to take rates down, which in turn promotes consumer optimism. And then, you know, consumers, we have more footfalls in our dealerships and then consumers are more uh, able to buy, you know, with a sense of confidence. I think those are the, some of the short-term measures and we've suggested a specific one actually. And that is that in India, you know, the, if you look at the overall car park, it's very large and a lot of these cars are getting very old. So 10 years old, 12 years old cars and there is a Traffic scheme. there is a method in which you can scrap and, um, and modernize the fleet through some kind of a program. And there are several benefits of that, you know, you, you get new cars and that stimulates demand and you get better technology in your engines and that improves emissions and the environment and so on. And I think if some smart people sat around a table, we can construct it in such a way that it can be revenue positive for the government as well. But you know, you talked about reducing excise. Uh, do you think that's really feasible given the state, I mean, the government wants the revenues? Uh, yeah. Do you think uh, there would be more demand which overall the, the revenues would be the same or, or even higher or uh, that's really the concern I guess from the government's point of view? Yeah, no, I'm sure. Work. That's exactly the trade-off that they have to do, but it is uh, appropriate for us to uh, give them a series of alternatives so that when they make their trade-offs they can make the right decision for the country and uh, what i would say to you actually is that the in in innate demand is there you know you witness our our showrooms and we've launched this car the eco sport uh, you know on june the 26th not that long ago and uh, the footfalls in our dealerships are still very very strong people are buying the product and and, and you know we've got more than fifty thousand. uh 
uh, order book right now, uh, you know, and we launched on June the 26th. So, you know, that's a, that tells you that the innate demand is there and it needs a catalyst or two to open the tap, if you like, and yeah. then, you know, the demand is, is there, the organic demand is there. Well, through all this doom and gloom, the eco spot really is the bright spark. But don't you think you've lost some opportunity because you've got so much demand for it and you haven't been able to cater for it? And really, in a market which is so sluggish, you know, losing any sale, uh, seems to be a really a massive, massively lost opportunity. Well, you know, we are very humbled and very gratified actually at the response that we've received from our customers, and and I can tell you that the uh, the level of demand that has uh, is uh, uh, a little unexpected as well. You know, so what we are doing very very uh, urgently, I can tell you that is like a 24/7 effort that's going on in our Chennai facility, uh, and along with our supply base to. Um, uh, look at all the bottlenecks we have in our uh, in our production mm -hmm. and in our supply chain, and working very hard to break those bottlenecks as we speak. I mean, we have a full court press on this to make sure that the waiting time for the customer is not too long. That we think that this demand will sustain for a for a for a period to come. And we see this segment actually, Hermas, that it's grown so much in the last three years, and we we see it continue to grow multifold. In fact, outpacing the rest of the industry going forward. But but tell me, I just want to get into the whole EcoSport launch and the ramp up. You know, the sense I get is you showed it at Auto Expo in 2012. It took a good 18 months to come. To be honest, you had a bit of a recall issue with the diesel immediately when you had launched it. Uh, no problem at all doing the recall. Sense was the ramp up wasn't as rapid or as smooth and you know you still don't have the numbers in the market so any lessons to be learned here maybe you know uh, it is really stretching you to a certain limit in terms of the ramp up phase well you know we do routine checks i mean this was something that we picked ourselves in fact in the in the factory itself and within i can tell you three days yeah, we the had glow the plug location yeah the glow plug we have within three days our engineers had the solution and within two weeks we were out reaching out to each customer and we just relocated the glow plug into a different position and uh, it was a very uh, very small in scope and uh, to me there's no compromise on that how does the ceo ensure safety and reliability of their products well it is a fundamental of our global brand promise so if you look at our global brand promise there are four very strong attributes to it quality green safe and smart attributes. So safety is one of the four very, very fundamental attributes of the product proposition we offer our, our customers. And you can see that our there's no compromise on our safety standards, be it in the factory, be it in the offices, and be it in the car that we are driving in. And uh, this car in particular has so many safety features that generally meet or exceed requirements for India, like the use of boron steel, the airbags that we have in this car, and we have the curtain airbag feature in this product as well. And there are several other smart features which uh, are intended to help you drive this car safely and work in safe environments in our factories and in our offices as well. That's a big priority for us. While Joginda may have ensured that the internal issues have been addressed, he still has to contend with stiff competition in the SUV space, a segment he seems to be betting big on. So is the EcoSport going to be a game changer for Ford? More on that when we return. The car market in India is viciously competitive, be it hatchbacks, sedans and now SUVs. And Ford being a volume player has offerings across the spectrum. But its big bet is on the EcoSport, which was aggressively priced at 5.59 lakhs when it was launched. So is this a sustainable strategy and is there a chance the EcoSport may eat into Ford's other products? You know, one of the wonderful things that's happened with the launch of the Echo Sport is that the demographics that's, that's visiting our showrooms is very, very broad. We are seeing people who were previously hatchback owners who like the shape of the Echo Sport and like what we have to offer in terms of smart features and technology in the Echo Sport. We are seeing people who are in large SUVs who, want, who think that this is the right size for my lifestyle and they're coming down to the uh, to our product. We're seeing sedan owners who are also coming in. So you're absolutely right. Our draw, if you like, has been for a, from a wide range of customers. And the demographics also is significant. 
We are seeing young professional men and women coming to shop the Ford brand now with the EcoSport. And, you know, I think one of the things obviously has been the really shock pricing which you launched it at. I remember 5.59 lakhs. And I just want to talk a bit about pricing. Uh, you know, there's this concept of optical pricing, which is, you know, you really have the great sticker price on the base version. Uh, you can't hold it for too long as well, uh, for whatever reason. So you've raised it to 5.82 right now, recently. The two questions I want to ask you in this is, one is, was that originally planned to come in at a very aggressive price and in time raise it? And secondly is, this base variant, it's a very small proportion of your model mix. So obviously, you don't want to sell too many of them because the sense is that the margins are not there or probably you're even losing something on the car. You know, people shop the low end, people shop the high end of the products as well. And uh, what we have to make sure is that we offer that con consumer choice. And I can tell you that most of the demand that we've actually received from the customer is at the high end of the range that we have. And, you know, even with the price increase, and I can talk a little bit about that, you know, our input costs have been, have been growing consistently and constantly. And uh, with the... Um, uh, rupee declining as well, so that's putting a pressure on our cars. And in addition to the input so, so cost, is it the rupee which led to this, or was this plan no, that no. after three months I'm going to raise the price in any case? No, no, no. We have to keep, we keep monitoring the situation as you would expect us to do, Hermans. You know, our input costs are growing, and you just have to look at all the data that supports that. Freight costs have been growing, going as well, and people don't seem to realize that that fuel prices are going up, freight costs go up. And then uh, raw material prices, which have begun to come down, are trending back up again. And then the decline of the rupee clearly is one of the factors. So, you know, there's only so much a manufacturer can do to absorb this level of consistent and constant uh, cost, cost increases. So we were forced in a way, you know, it, we couldn't take it anymore. So we had to increase price. No, no doubt it is still great value and perhaps still, you know, you're not getting the contribution on the base version, which, which is the 1.5 because clearly you're not even getting the excise benefit. So that's also tagged on to your costs over there. So again, specific question, you've got a very small proportion of the base 1.5 in your model mix. Is that strategic? Because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, you, you just can't get that. You've even stopped bookings uh, at a certain uh, point might lead to a bit of customer, you know, dissatisfaction because uh, long waiting periods. So, is it is it a strategy really? You know, get them in to the showroom with a attractive sticker price, but then try and upsell them. No, we satisfy natural demand, Harma. So, you know, if there are people who want to shop the low end, we have that uh, available. And you're right, you know, temporarily, we have stopped working on some of the petrol units and some of the low end units. And, and that's because our waiting period for those variants was uh, becoming too long. And we felt that, you know, we, we, we should uh, try and uh, stop bookings temporarily until we are able to get our supply chain and everything sorted out. And then as soon as that is sorted out and the delivery times sh are shorter, we'll reopen the bookings on those variants. You, you've done a great job with the Ford EcoSport, but since one gets is really Ford is a one-trick pony. Uh, company doesn't have the bandwidth really to kind of sell all the other products with the same kind of, uh, let's say, magnitude. Uh, you had the Figo, uh, that was the one at that point. Uh, the other cars were really marginal. And right now what we're seeing, you've got EcoSport, Figo numbers have come down. And quite frankly, Endeavor, uh, Fiesta, Fiesta Classic, all very, very marginal. So do you think it's a bandwidth issue or, or what is really the issue over here? Because it's really on one model that a lot of the concentration is. It's a strategy, okay? It's a profitable growth strategy that we are engaged in, uh, underpinned by our one-fourth plan. That's the strategy. And over a period of time, you'll see us introducing more and more products. And we just have to make sure that as the, the cadence of our new products, it's at the right time. I mean, the dynamics in the Indian industry has changed quite a lot, actually. I think you would agree with that. And it's incumbent on us to make sure that in terms of our new products that are going to be coming in, they're at the right time and they actually appeal to the right segment as well. So that's something that we have to make a good judgment on. But I can tell you that we launched the Figo. The Figo was a great success. We just crossed three lakh units between the domestic demand for Figo and the uh, international demand for Figo. And then now we got the Eco, the Eco Sport as well. So the Figo and the Eco Sport are our big volume draws. And we have the other products which are relatively niche segments. And our uh, overall strategy is that over a period of time, we'll offer a full range of vehicles.
No, but let's stick to the existing products. You know, you've got the Fiesta, really sells in minuscule numbers in a segment which is, isn't really that small. So, I understand you've got a strategy, something called Project X, where you're trying to, uh, you know, get people if they're waiting too long for an eco spot, not to let them go and try and maybe uh, get them into the Ford family with some other product. Uh, you know, the sort of forcing them in that direction. So, just your thoughts on on that. I can tell you that the uh, level of interest that we've had on the EcoSport in a very short space of time, in terms of inquiries, exceeds 2 lakh units. 2 lakh customers are shopping for the EcoSport. So as, we, as they come into our showrooms, it is entirely appropriate for us to say to our customer, well, here's a full range of Ford products and, and maybe the Figo appeals to you and maybe the Fiesta appeals to you. So I can tell you that with the footfalls and the very broad demographics that we are getting into our showrooms. We are actually having great success. The Figo in particular, if you look at our segment, it's in a depressed industry, by the way. So, you know, we, we talked about that. But if you look at our segment share, we are holding the segment share pretty well, actually. While Jogendra seems confident about his strategy, it's not just the product, but a strong backend that's going to help companies grow in these tough times. So what's the plan there? Find out when we return. The last year has been a tough one for auto companies and most are looking to offset the hike in taxes and a volatile rupee by increasingly localizing their manufacturing. So will this be something Ford has on the cards as well? There are three things which uh, help us become really competitive in the marketplace. One is that we are, think of one Ford and global Ford as like a a stable of products, technologies, features and so on. So we have the great advantage in this vehicle that we are driving in. Now this is a global platform, you know, plug from one Ford if you like. The design language that we have on the outside is plug from, that's the Ford global design language. So what SUVs. you're saying is the cost of development has already been kind of done. Right, so it's very, because this is a platform which is used on other vehicles as well, so we get the, the advantage there. And then the, the technologies that we pulled from the one Ford stable if you like is, you know, sync as, as you know, on this car and the EcoBoost technology on our on our vehicle as well is is one of those uh, smart features that we pulled from so that helps a great deal in terms of development cost the second piece is scale this product is being manufactured in chennai not only for domestic market but also for international markets and we can talk about that separately so that the scale if you produce more in your factory, the unit cost of production comes down, right? So that's the second advantage that we are getting. And the third piece is localization, as you point out. And, you know, on uh, the Figo, we, ha we have a great level of localization. And on this product as well, we have a very satisfactory level of localization, which then enables us to, you know, reduce cost as well. And you're right, in the supply chain, our global suppliers are, are helping us big time, you know, as they help us in all other parts of the world. And then they are in turn localizing their supply chain as well. So over a period of time, we are finding that our global suppliers are, are making their own supply chain more capable in this country. And specifically, um, my view is that uh, over a period of time, even specifically on powertrain technologies, you know, which tend to be more complicated in a vehicle like this, that over a period of time, the supply base in this country will become capable for powertrain as well. And progressively, I see us uh, localizing our powertrain technologies as well in uh, in India. So coming specifically to the powertrain, uh, you know, you've really invested a lot in full-scale manufacturing of powertrain. Yes. Obviously, even the Indian market, however big it is, it cannot really support only uh, domestic demand. You have to look at, let's say, a global market and that means huge exports of powertrain out of India because I think typically you need volumes of at least 200, 300,000 to make the whole thing work, isn't it? So coming to powertrain, I mean, uh, I just wanted to understand, it's, it's a big investment and really what were the issues in, in deciding on setting up such a full-fledged uh, manufacturing facility like you're doing in Sanan? You're absolutely right. There are actually two factories that we're building in Sanan. There's the vehicle assembly factory and then there's our, our engine plant as well, just like we have in Chennai. It's an integrated manufacturing facility. So when Sanand comes on steam, to, uh, by the end of 2014, it will become operational. Our engine capacity between Chennai and Sanand will be 6,10,000, okay, annually. And out of that, 
40 percent as much as 40 percent of that will be exported so you're absolutely right that we are our focus is to make India an export hub for Ford Motor Company, one of our global export hubs, both for small vehicles as well as low displacement engines. And we are very much on that journey. And in fact, a couple of days ago, we announced that, uh, you know, with the Figo, we are exporting to 37 markets. And we've already announced that with the EcoSport, we're going to add new markets in the mature markets area now. So we are adding Europe, we are adding uh, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan as export markets for this product. We are going to take that uh, footprint, if you like, our export footprint, up from the 37 markets that Frigo is exporting to, to something like 50 markets over the next four to five years. That's a significant acceleration in our export strategy, and, and we believe that India is a, is a great place to source exports and uh, really committed to that. So all the investments you're making are actually building scale for us, for both domestic as well as for export. And the rupee depreciation, obviously, from an export point of view, that really is of, of benefit. It makes you much more attractive as a as a uh, export ba uh, a base. Yeah. And so, is that going to be more of a push for exports given this scenario? Because really, there'll be a lot more margins on that. Or is that the export markets are also struggling at the moment? Well, you see, this is again a strategy. So, you know, when we set out to make India an export hub was, you know, while the rupee was still stable and, you know, the outlook was very, very positive for the currency. So the fact that this has happened, I mean, we think one of, by the way, it's, you know, uh, these things happen all the time. And uh, our responsibility is to introduce sufficient flexibility in our factories to make sure that we are able to hedge some of this volatility in the business, you know, be it uh, the currency or be it... Uh, demand on power between diesel and petrol and be it demand between export and domestic. So we have, in, with all the investment that we've done, we've also built in this flexibility. And so what has happened is that in this particular case, we are able to have flexibility. So in Chennai, for example, we can produce left-hand drive and right-hand drive and different variants for export markets. So if export de demand is up, we can dial up the export portion. If the domestic demand is done, we can dial the domestic demand down. So that flexibility, if you like, is inherent in our factories now, which enables us to better manage our, our mix management between uh, domestic and, and uh, international. And by the way, between diesel and petrol also. And of course, that's a business hedge now. And uh, specifically, it also in this particular circumstance, with the rupee declining, that clearly is beneficial for our, for our export strategy. And Coming again to, let's say, uh, the domestic market, uh, where you've really been focusing on the on the smaller cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, let, and it's, it's all the compact car segment, uh, cars under 10 lakhs, and uh, it's all part of one Ford as well. And I think, you know, really the focus going back to its roots, which is the B segment cars. Uh, uh, is there any plans or view to kind of look even more upscale just from a brand point of view because right now you are still very much in the mass market segment and you know from a brand point of view it's it's perhaps good to have a little bit of a premium image as well it helps profitability you can charge a premium accordingly so do you think this is one uh, one area you're looking at well thank you for the ideas Hermas and uh, uh, what what we do uh, continue to do is we study uh, the market very very intensively and what's wonderful about the India uh, market is that new segments are emerging and new consumer demand is emerging all the time and so we have to really keep a very sharp eye on where the profitable growth opportunities are so I can you can rest assured that we do all these studies and uh, and there's more to come there's more to come uh, we'll be at the auto show in February we'll see you there so look forward to a big surprise yeah. over there well we'll see you at the auto show in uh, February